Charges in former President Trump's classified documents case. Trump accused of asking a staffer now to delete camera footage. Fox 5 legal analyst uh, Wendy Patrick joining us now with more on what he's accused of. Wendy, good morning. Good morning. So this was kind of added on. Uh, what is he accused of exactly? What's going on? Well, this is a superseding indictment. And basically what happened here is, you remember he was already charged with a slew of counts regarding the Mar-a-Lago documents. But here they added the New Jersey boasting incident where he was allegedly displaying confidential information, uh, national security issues. And also now he's accused of asking a staffer inadvertently and indirectly to delete footage. Now that's important because that's a very different kind of charge than simply holding on the material or or even not giving it back on time when there's active concealment of evidence at least those are the allegations that's very different but it's more nuanced than that role and Charlie because he didn't directly he doesn't ever directly ask it was through a third party mm. so he's being called the boss the boss wants it deleted kind of reminds you of the big guy remember that's how they were related to Joe Biden but one of the other things that this superseding indictment did is add a third defendant why is that important? If Joe Biden is the big guy, Donald Trump is the big fish. And if you have lesser defendants that can maybe flip or provide information on somebody higher up the food chain, in this case, Donald Trump himself, that's also significant that there are now two co-defendants to work with potentially for the government. Okay, Wendy, I know you just mentioned a few times superseding indictment. Let's go to law school 101. In layman's term, what does that, what does that mean? Well, it actually means exact what almost what it sounds like it would mean. It it's a substitute for the original indictment, mm -hmm. but all it really does is it substitutes all the same charges, uh -huh. but it adds one more and adds another defendant. I see. So that means it's it's. it's basically a substitute that makes it a little bit more serious for Donald Trump because you've got that uh, asking to delete the surveillance footage, which is kind of a different charge than yeah. just holding on to documents, not giving them sure, back, obstructing sure. justice, and then adds that third third uh, co-conspirator. So based on that, do the charges, do they get argued in the same trial? Is this a different trial? I can't keep up with the trials. Nope. And that that's the superseding nature of it, is sure. it's the same case and it will be the same trial. It just adds to the indictment, adds a couple of charges and adds another sure. defendant. And, and I do so have to say, you know, with every day that this sort of moves forward with superseding charges that kind of replace the old ones, you know what that means? That yeah. means we're marching towards a trial date even farther in the future. Mm. And that is significant both legally and politically. Because remember, as we get closer to the 2024 election, mm. you know, you wonder whether or not having a trial right before that election oh, won't boy. look Can really bad, uh, really for everybody. And that that's the goal of the Trump team is to make it as close as possible to where it actually might be after the election, if you can imagine how complicated that's going to be. I, w I, I wanted to ask that because then I'm thinking, well, the January 6th, um, the charges looming there as well. When are those coming down? And I can't keep track. You know, those are really important as well, because history repeats itself. And when you look at something as significant as the, the Trump lawyers having met with special counsel this week, we are looking at the same pattern as we saw in the last case. You've got a target letter, a meeting with lawyers, and then the indictment. That is the same thing that's happening with the January 6th case. You had the target letter uh, yesterday. You had the meeting between Trump's lawyers and the special counsel. And that's why many people are thinking now it's going to be an indictment. So it's going mm. to be procedurally the wow. same thing. So this would be thrice indicted, twice impeached. <laughs> wow. Now running for president again in 2024, if you want to talk about how interesting this is. So we are now officially formally on indictment watch. Yeah. Let me only tell you one thing and that I think makes polls. it a little bit different. Yeah, oh yeah. One thing that makes this a little bit different is that meeting yesterday wasn't an all day meeting when they were maybe talking about how is he gonna surrender and what, how many charges they're going to be. It was a little bit less than an hour so you wonder how much business or information could possibly be exchanged mm. 
in that short period of time. I mean, they could have parked in a parking meter outside the courthouse mm -hmm. instead of actually sort of settled in for this long negotiation strategy session with Jack Smith, special counsel. That's the only thing that gives me a little pause as to maybe how much could possibly have happened in an hour. I mean, we know that in the news cycle, you know, it's it's a media blackout for days when something happens with Donald Trump, but this meeting was very, very short. Mm -hmm. What happens next? What's next? Well, yeah, what happens next is if we are now formally on indictment watch, you think through how long that took the last time. Last time it was later in the month that the indictment finally came after the target letter and then the meeting. Mm. So because we know the grand jury went home yesterday without rendering anything, we might think within a week would probably know a little bit more. Um, and, you know, it, it, indictment watch usually doesn't take a long time. And you already know the special counsel wants to get this done as expedient as possible because they don't want it happening close to the election. That would be bad for everyone. So if an indictment is going to come, what's next, Shali, is it's probably going to come sooner rather than later. I wanted to ask you one final question. As an attorney looking purely at the law, just the law, Everybody's saying, including Mr. Trump himself, this is all, all of it is politically motivated. Is it in your legal mind or are these charges and indictments legitimate? Well, you, you got to believe it's always legitimate when you have evidence to back it up. I think the, the greater procedural argument politically that some people are making is the timing, not necessarily about the merits of the charges or the propriety of the evidence that's used to support them, but the timing. I mean, you're talking about audio tape, videotape. You know, you can't make any of that up. The political argument they're making is that they're bringing charges now and that they're bringing them at all. And so those are sort of the um, let's say those are more policy art, policy and political arguments rather than is there enough evidence to support these charges. Wendy Patrick, we will be speaking again, I'm sure. Have a great week. No doubt. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Thank you.